Hello and welcome to another LEGO Builder review of Ninjago. This is a new brand called the Zimo Zimo Z I M O Zimo Zimo Zimo. And uh, all of these, the no boxes, anything, all of these come in one of these heads, just like the Xingyuan Army Pack that I reviewed last time that had the transparent colorful heads. These come in solid heads and in the exact same shape. Let us open one of these lids. See there, it's just an empty space in there. And there's a little gap on each side of the lid that helps it slot into the right position. Not that you have to worry about the right position and calling because the print doesn't actually go up there, but it's just to hold it you know, and, and hold it quite tight. And you see here, all of these hold quite tightly, so if I was to do that, and uh, just to pick up the top one, you see, oh, well, the middle one fell off, but you know, the rest of it held on pretty tight, huh? So, to be mindful of that, and you can see here, just like the Shingon heads, because they're exactly the same mold thing going on, uh, there are four studs on top, they can attach figures and whatever to. And for the most part, these figures are print. These heads are printed um, roughly in the same direction. With the studs slightly on an angle. And uh, one of these heads, uh, yeah, the core head inside. To show you before I move on, just like Xingyuan, all these have spare hands. All the hands are black though. And uh, every single one of these also comes with a crappy hero jumper. So yeah. So we got our main four main ninjas here. Uh, Kai. I think Jay, yeah, Zane, Cole, and then two uh, uh, Cobra people. Uh, not Cobra, but uh, Ninja, but there's Snake Tribe. Uh, the only thing wrong with these face prints is this one here. His eyebrow doesn't have a little slash, like a little gap in there, but you can probably easily do that yourself. Just scrape off the paint or something. Inside each head is a figure and all the parts in a little baggie crunched in there uh, uh, along with this piece of paper. You see his basic instructions and you how to assemble some of the weapons. Uh, so, the paper is pretty much the same quality as a standard Lego instruction sheet. It's got that uh, kind of shiny laminated feel to it, and it's, it's clear enough. Uh, I mean, there's not much going on in here, but um, there you go. That's all that. And just to see on the other side, in case you only bought one of these, you got a Ninja Blocks series uh, versus, and it shows you all the different ones there, 16 pieces, 18 pieces, yada yada yada. Apparently this is series 6. One to six. Quick look at the bad guys first. You can see right here. You might recognize this shape if you've been watching my channel for a while now. These guys use the mold of old Xingyang when they first started off. They have the weird shaped legs and they have the thicker arms unlike official Lego. So uh, these are pretty much made in the same factory as old Xingyang was, I'm pretty sure. The plastic feels the same. Uh, they do have sharper shoulders, which is the only difference I can think of from the old Xingyang. And that's what it looks like inside. The hands inside just use a standard peg instead of the C shape, unlike official Lego. And these legs have no... Uh, these pegs have no bumps whatsoever, so these slide in and out very easily. None of these have really have any clutch issues. I think some of the, some of the hands might be slightly looser, but uh, no clutch issues whatsoever. As for print quality, these also fall in line with old Xingyuan. While these look good from a distance, you might notice a little bit of flaws if you look right up close to them. So that's definitely an issue right here. And also the accessories aren't exactly accurate because I'm pretty sure they don't come with stud shooters. You can see here the print is okay for what it is, but um, the shape is um, leaves much to be desired for arms and legs. And if I move this hat, skull thing, it's tight. You know, it is a hardish plastic, um, just like the other bootlegs that I've reviewed so far with these guys. One last thing to note is that these stud shooters are very disappointing. I might take a crap than shooting a stud. We have another snake guy here, again the print is decent from a distance, he also comes with a stud shooter for some reason, and there's a quick look on his back, but for some odd reason he comes with kind of flesh colored hands, which just looks like he's wearing weird gloves, it's, it's distracting and odd. Okay, we have the red ninja here, at least the face print is accurate, and torso print, notice here that even though the snake guys that come with these sets are sort of with the newer sets and some newer newer builds, uh, the actual ninjas are actually sort of an older uniform. So in case you uh, didn't have these already, this could be one way to pick it up. But, uh, you know, Deku's done better versions of these. So, yeah. And there's this Collect Them All Herd series 
Z Meng Toy. So it's Simul or Z Meng? Because, because um, I mean, there's a Z and I and Z. Well, this is, but but Meng is an M there, but the O is in Toys. I said I know. Quick look at the back there. The logo is printed just okay. Um, the gold is okay, but does have a fuzzy feel to it because you know uh, I think I think it did dry in time, but just not as fast as it should. And there he is with all his gear. His hair is hard plastic and also really hard to look at. All the edges very rough. And you see in the back there's a bit of a plastic issue. It just looks sort of really like cut out wrongly. He's got the golden katana and, and one of these blades that you just sort of build. Uh, these are okay. These are quite tight in there so they don't fall off, which is good. Um, and the sword itself is feels a bit harder than uh, Lego swords. Next we have the blue ninja who does have the little cut in his uh, eyebrows, so that, that's accurate at least. I think his heads are printed a little bit higher than it should be, and I also think the heads are a little more angular than the usual Lego stuff. He has another gold katana, and he has this blue mask, his hair is right there, also a hard piece of plastic. Oh, just put that on. That doesn't quite fit his head, you see it looks a bit odd, because again the shape is wrong. And the back here has uh, extra plastic molding. He also has this thing which is far too long for him to hold properly. This, this, this blade there. So it doesn't matter which side he's holding, it's always a bit too high. So just to get this, plug that there, plug his head in, his hair, and he kind of looks okay-ish. Next here we have the Green Ninja, again the print is pretty okay from what I can see. Um, yeah, just average print and let's quick look at the back. Uh, he comes with a gold bar, a uh, black hilt connected to a gold chain, connected to another one of these green blades. There he is with his gear, mask and hair plugged onto him. And uh, if you haven't noticed on the video yet, there's quite a few scratch marks and chips on the plastic. Like it was scratched before it was printed, so sometimes the print will cover it and where there's no print you'll probably notice it a bit more. His hair is also very rough compared to the rest of the figure. Uh, there's a plastic injection dot there. The whole hair, all the hairlines are much more simple and thicker than the official Lego because the hair doesn't fit on the head as well as official Lego stuff and also there's a huge plastic gap there just a huge line where only molds join which makes it a very ugly looking piece finally we have Bushy Eyebrow Man who uh, the print is still okay uh, especially for black plastic they managed to uh, put enough paint there to have the paint show up on black backing uh, the chest like the neck area that yellow is not really printed too well because it's on put on dark plastic and they didn't line it with white underneath the yellow to make it stand out a bit more. Here's a quick look on the back. You might be able to notice there's a bit of a scratch there on the logo and the flip this to the front here's all this gear on him, katana and this little uh, handle bar and blade that you built. And again the hair is much more simple than official Lego molds. And it just doesn't look too right. If you are getting these purely for figures, there are absolutely no reasons for you to pick up this set because at the same price you can get other bootleg brands who have better representations of these ninjas. If you like the extra big heads here, these these are nice big heads and you, you might want to use for something. Maybe a Ninjago fan wants a new pencil case or a paperclip box. And this, this set's okay, you can get it for that. But then don't expect too much with these figures. The extra hands are nice just like Shinron and the hero jumper, super jumper things are crap as always. Just like official Lego ones are crap so those are completely pointless and a waste of space, waste of plastic. The figures themselves, the plastic feels okay, it definitely feels like a generation one Xing uh, Doesn't The plastic doesn't feel like it's gonna break or snap, all the accessories, nothing, is, uh, uh, nothing feels like it's gonna snap there as well. There's no loose joints, there's no joints that are too hard, too tough. However, the shape is very bad compared to uh, what we have these days. Back then when Xing Yang first started off, it was okay for, have, for it to have a weird shape because there was no one else copying many figures like that. But now we have all these different bootleg brands using this weird shape. It's just not the way to go. 
Having this weird shape also means that the arms won't be able to fit into official Lego or vice versa. The joints will be either too loose on one side or too tight on the other. So you can't really swap pieces around. And this also means that the hands will be slightly bigger than official Lego. Just like old Xinyuan hands, you have to uh, sort of sand it down a little bit or scratch it a little bit so it can fit into a Lego arm. What I have noticed is that uh, even though these have the weird Xinyuan legs from Generation 1, uh, they do fit very tightly on these display uh, stands. Uh, unlike Xinyuan, sometimes the joint will be a bit loose because well, there's nothing holding it tight. Um, but here it seems to be okay, so they've used maybe probably a, a different type of plastic. Uh, but it feels the same in the hand, but it's a bit more... The, the legs anyway, it's a bit tighter than the old Xinyuan stuff. So there you go, uh, I wouldn't really pick this up unless uh, you want the heads or you have morbid curiosity or you have a fascination of collecting every single version of the same figure in different bootleg companies just for comparisons and for fun. Other than that, uh, yeah, let this set go. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and also leave a comment below on what maybe your favorite Ninjago bootleg is or maybe what your favorite set is. I've also reviewed a lot of other Ninjago bootlegs from different brands, different series and you know different figures overall so you can check those out as well as well as bootleg sets. I've also reviewed a few official Ninjago stuff so you can check those out as well if you'd like to. And if you want to support this channel even further, please feel free to head over to the Patreon page in the video description below or in the video annotations. That would mean a lot to me. But most importantly, take care and have a nice day. See you soon. Bye bye now.